Welcome to the Well House Exorcism. I'm PJ. I'm Shanna. Hi, I'm Dan. Our special guest for this evening. It's very exciting. So we have finished our stories about our exorcism, hence the title of our podcast. And we've been focusing on haunted locations and haunted objects. So we thought we'd bring Dan in as a special guest for the Wellhouse exorcism, removing him from our Games Overboard and our D&D podcast. Tell his backstories of some crazy stuff that happened to him. We were just discussing um, before we started our podcast about the location of where our town is and where his town is from, where we live in adjacent towns, and um, the background. So again, the haunted locations and haunted objects. So go ahead, Dan. Tell us your story. Well, so paint a picture with <clears throat> your words. Paint a picture with my words. All right. Um, Come on, Bob Ross. Yeah, I want to see some happy clouds. And some sad trees. Okay, you know some what? sad scalping. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Well, yes, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have to clean the brush and beat the devil out of it, right? Oh, praise Jesus! No, we don't do that. I do that. Yeah, I don't do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know how you make holy water? I tell me. You boil the hell out of it. <laughs> that's that's usually. <laughs> This is why we're such good friends. Um, <laughs> I need to leave again. <laughs> so the area that I grew up, um, the Stop area. Stop touching the mic. Yeah. Uh, just, um, we have to edit that out later. Oh, good. I'm just going to continue to do it and make your job harder. What happens if I touch it? Well, that'll make it harder. <laughs> I'm going to touch it. <laughs> T- that touching, not the other touching. <laughs> Okay, anyway, back to the topic. make my job harder. <laughs> I mean, let's go upstairs right now. I can't. Oh, this is like us recording the... Uh, the Danger and dice? <laughs> no. When you and I were stuck alone down here doing our review of Azul, and you had dad jokes, and I was like, we can't. We're done. <laughs> we almost made it to 13 years of marriage, but it's gone now. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so the area that I'm from, the Tri-County area um, has a long history of heinous things, the biggest being... A, a, a massacre uh, that uh, the native population did on the settlers. Oh, what was that? The Wyoming Valley Massacre. Yeah, the Wyoming it was Valley in the Massacre. Uh, late 1800s. Right. So, 1700s. 1700s. Okay, yes. there you go. That's 1800s would have been Victorian era. Yeah, that was turn of the century. Definitely 1700s, yep. So, anyway, um, in my particular area, like within the f- maybe five houses around me there were three families there and of course they were all wiped out so the land itself still has a lot of fun memories fun activities uh you know if you if you want to call it that um but the cool thing that i found out about my house of course it's no longer there it was torn down about a year or two ago What's, what's the that? cool thing about your anyway, house? The cool thing about the house was uh, it was the original Grange Hall for that county. And uh, we, we found out doing some more researching that it was what would be considered the first mobile home. It was transported there on a boulder. And if you remember, <laughs> PJ, if you if you remember, um, the kitchen was always slanted. Yeah. Yeah, that's because it was resting on that boulder still up until we moved there in the 80s uh up <laughs> until we moved the out boulder? in 2000 when did we move 2004 2005 no the boulder was still there the reason the whole place slanted is because it was still staying on the boulder and there's nothing supporting oh, the other side of the house that's funny that's why it was that's always like that messed up. and it didn't matter how many stupid jacks we put under the house it kept falling <laughs> so um, See, when you said mobile home, I, I was like starting to laugh and be like, oh, we're living in a trailer, but now it's no, just mobile as in a mobile rock. as in they moved it with a freaking rock. Most of my life was living in mobile homes. I, I know. in trailers. So I, that's I was like, hey, connection. No, you have no, rocks. No, I, I have an old school. I got a rock. Home. I got a rock. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> so um, not only was it the very first Grange Hall for the area, but... Shortly after it was the Grange Hall, it turned into the first schoolhouse. Mm-hmm. 
So you've got a, a two-story schoolhouse that's got an attic, no basement, of course. And after so many years... Didn't your parents go there Why for their school? Why wasn't there a basement? No, it was be- because there was no... <laughs> Do you remember that house? You couldn't get anything under there. Is it because it was on a boulder? Yes, it was because it was on a boulder. Oh. Oh, we're talking about your house, not the ta- not the community not, center. Yes. I'm good. So that's the Back. house. Now, <laughs> after the community center was built, that was turned... It's like, I had friends' parents who went there for school. Your parents went there, didn't My they? My dad went there to school. There we go. See, uh, I know things. Elementary school, but that was after that building was built. Then that turned into the elementary school for, for the county. Um so a lot of stuff that I encountered growing up was just random little things, people running up and down the stairs. What kind of people? What kind of people? I don't know. What age of the people? I don't I don't know. I mean, I heard, I used to hear a lot of kids running up and down. Now my dad always says he never heard any of that stuff. But I know he did because he'd always yell at us to, to go back to bed. Like, yeah. We're already, it just seemed it was three boys. We're but, already yeah. in bed. Yeah, there are three of us. Of course, we're going to cause a muck. That's what we do. Luck. Luck. No, luck. no, it's, it's hit her. He can't. It's illegal. That's not. I said her, not me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not so, illegal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ask Angie. She punched me in the face three times the other night. I did. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna let that go. She, she just confirmed. <laughs> no. So, I would I would hear people running. You know, kids. What I assumed were kids running up and down the, the, the stairs and running uh, up and down the hallways of my house. My mom would hear it all the time. My mom still hears things on the new, you know, the new, the, the farmland that we have now. Um, nobody else has seen it. I haven't even seen what's up there. So, so the new house they built, they're having issues there? Well, it's not so much issues. Up at, up at that farm, every time there is some kind of building project going on in the area or excavation every time earth is being moved my mom sees somebody walking through the house mm, so she upset something um not that she upset something it's something's upset and she's the only one that sees it okay so with this house she would hear it uh, my brothers and i would hear it my oldest brother actually used to play hide and seek with a child in the house that uh, no one else could see. See, my brother Jack has stories like that from our old house um, that we lived in before we moved to, to Millville. Yeah. And there are stories about him, like, hanging out this this ghost. They would play hide-and-seek. they play with trains. He would make snacks for them to share. Like, I have no memory of I've heard what... both of these stories, and one of them was named Henry, wasn't he? Not for me, George? no. George? No, I, I don't, I don't think, oh, I don't think there was ever a, a name for There was it. never I, Henry, but George is mine. George, okay. I, I, little, I, little Georgie. I remember, so my oldest brother went to the Navy. He came back on leave the one day, and he came up to me, and he says, he looked at my brother, my, my, my middle brother and me, and he goes, guys, you remember that ghost child we used to play hide-and-seek with? He, yeah. I think I pissed it off. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Great. What'd you do? It's, well, it's because he left. Because he left to go to the Navy. Mm. Mm. He liked y'all in one place, yeah. Pretty much. So that's about the extent that I've personally had there. Um, well, no. I, I also had some other weird things. So I didn't have... I, I wouldn't say I, I was... We weren't wealthy growing up. We had exactly preach, what we needed. Baby preach. We had exactly what we needed. And every now and then, one of us would get spoiled with something. So in this case, my oldest brother got... A CD player, a boombox CD player. Yeah. This is big. Oh, yeah. 1994. I remember it vividly. The very first album that we had on Queen. Nope, on Dance. CD. Something Metallica related. Not Metallica. Ooh. It was live. Uh, Throwing Copper. Still one of my favorite albums. Good album. We had that, Should and we Queen. also had we also had Blues Traveler. Uh, Blues Travel. Blues Traveler album was number four. Now. My oldest brother and I would constantly listen to these CDs, and his room was in a rather unfinished room in the house, so we'd constantly have to get kicked over to the room that my middle brother and I were sharing and everything. Uh, and as we got older, of course, my oldest brother is driving, he's going off to see friends, my middle brother, of course, is doing something else with his friends, I'm home all alone. 
Aww, and while being there. home all alone, that's yeah, fine. Kevin! You exactly. Weren't, you weren't really alone, though, because the ghost was there. Well, see, that's the thing. I thought I was alone, and I'd be downstairs <laughs> watching TV, and the next thing I know, I'd hear live blasting with the volume all the way up in, in my oldest brother's room. So I'd go, what the hell? And I'd have to walk up the steps, go all the way to the end of the hallway, go to his room, and turn the music down and turn it off and come back downstairs, and everything would be fine for the next five minutes until it comes right back on, full blast, and it's continuing from the same spot where it left off. And this is something that... setting his groove. Well, I guess. I mean, he must have really liked, you know, live. So it, that was something that happened quite regularly for me for a good portion, uh, maybe about two or three years straight. Every time I'd be home alone, that music was blaring. I wanted to hang out with you. I wanted to have a dance party. I'm not a dancer. I've never been a dancer. Parents well, are gone, man. Let's blast this. I don't do that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, party. Get the, get the red solo cups. Let's do this. <laughs> That's what I wanted. I wanted my hide and seek and I wanted some music. I guess. I guess. In 94 when you're seven (laughs) years old. Exactly. (laughs) Get the red solo (laughs) cop. Hey, can you get some beer? No. I don't even (laughs) like beer. I still don't like beer. So that was... Get you know, some Jolly Ranchers and Zimas. Oh, that takes me back. <laughs> well, that would have been... Yeah. <laughs> that would have been t- oh, Zima's gross, too. Oh, God. Um, but when you add those Jolly Ranchers, it makes it almost not gross. Okay, see, the operative word being almost... <laughs> I know. I chose my words correctly. <laughs> I enjoyed them plain. The Jolly Ranchers? Yeah, me too. No. No, the Zima? The Zimas. <laughs> You're gross, man. <laughs> Seema's gross. I know this. I know this ASL for that. Who? <laughs> Literally, that's what it is. Oh, that's right. I mean, I just think of a cat trying to throw up one. This is cat. Cat vomit. See ASL. I'm learning. I, th- I think that's Steely Dan. This is cat. It's no, no, no. The that's whiskers. dishonest John. Dishonest, dishonest John. John. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if anybody caught that reference when you're listening, that means that you were a kid in the 60s. Congratulations. You were a kid in the 60s? I was not. I just watched a lot of those cartoons. We're all the same age. (laughs) Pretty much. Um, I'm the oldest on the podcast right now. uh And she doesn't count. She's on the couch. Relaxing. Don't ignore me. Ignore them. Anyway. It's okay. I'm, I'm used to being ignored. Um, so this guy wanted to have a party with you and you wouldn't have a party back. I, no, I didn't know. Did you that. ever talk to it? No. No, I never had any conversations with it. Now, PJ coming over, had some. we had some fun times. Um, one In of your house? Favorites, <laughs> one of my favorites was um, I was telling him all the things that what I would hear at night. That was a weird sound. Do that again real quick. No. Well, no, you moved what, your headphones. I was doing this. I don't know why I was scratching my head. It's like I don't Tommy know. Pickle walking. You're like... Squish, 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 squish. Okay, that's... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so PJ was over, and I told him all the things that he would hear uh, at night, including uh, you're going to hear footsteps, you're going to hear people running around the hall. Kids laughing. You're going to hear kids laughing. <laughs> and uh, my favorite yeah. one was... You're going to hear a really loud noise. That's just the furnace. Don't worry about the furnace. Now, my middle brother's dog was with us, Bobby. And uh, Bobby would always sleep with us when when we were in the living room or wherever. And we're just camped out in the living room floor. We're just camped out in the living room floor. And uh, PJ looks, PJ starts going, Bob, stop it, stop it. I said, What, what? Oh, Bob's tugging on my pillow. And just to screw with him, I said, PJ. Bob's over here. Oh my God! It was it was, it was Bob. It was Bob tugging the pillow. I hate you. I know it's great. Um, but some of the other stuff that we we used to hear. Now I do remember seeing somebody walking up the stairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember seeing because that. I spotted them and then we both looked and yeah, we saw just saw we there. just saw the legs walking up and that was it. Now one of my favorite times with that. Now that you mentioned it was do you remember Jared? Jared tiring. Good old taters. <laughs> oh taters. I miss that guy. <laughs> so Taters was was with us the one night. We, we called him Taters because he'd go Taters, Taters. Yeah, I that's love taters. Uh, he, he had a, a <laughs> nice southern draw, and he was spending the night, and um, he was sitting down on the couch. No, he was laying on the couch, and he had his blanket over him, and he said, "Bob, get off me, Bob, get off me." I said, "Buddy, Bob's not there. Bob's with me and PJ." Well, well, who's sitting on me? Who's sitting on me? And we looked over, and there was a nice indent 
sitting yeah. on his legs and he was freaking out and it Get was it off, it it was, like, <laughs> that's the thing even at that age it was more hilarious to us than it was mm-hmm. terrifying because he was freaking out so bad um and of course after it stopped he was giggling and and laughing too I got a lap dance from a ghost. <laughs> I'm sure it's what Tater said. So I'm, I'm sure if he tells that story, that's what he would say now. <laughs> um, Wonder what ever happened to him. I I, I think he, he messaged me when we were in college. Oh really? But, okay. Yeah, I need to. Yeah, he's to see a good if he's still one. on Facebook. That's been a long time ago. One of the one of one of the more memorable experiences, and I've mainly had these with you, PJ, so I know you can back me up on these, is everything that happened at that community center. Yep, I figured that would be I the... I love these stories. That would so, be the crux of our So the community episode. center uh, was just up the street from my house. Um, <clears throat> and of course, you know, it's was, a community center. Is, well, I mean, still, still exists. Well, my house doesn't. But the, the center does. <laughs> <laughs> they so, have bluegrass dancing every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. still <laughs> They still do. Um... So this place is, is and it, it's still used heavily for wedding receptions. You know, anything that's going on in the county, you're you're gonna Easter be there. Easter egg hunts, yep. Yeah. Um, so a lot of, a lot of big events. I remember going up there as a child for you know the Christmas pageants and yep. everything. Um, but to me, that place was always weird. It always felt wrong. It always felt off. Constantly, it, it didn't matter what time of the year it was. It could be the middle of summer. You could be roasting your balls outside, and as soon as you get in, at certain spots, I mean, you might as well just be sitting in a pool of ice. It's true. Like even with uh, our friends' wedding, there I, there are places you don't want to be alone. No, there. Uh, we we've gone to a few weddings where you go, yeah, we're hanging out, we're having fun. I you know, I got to pee. Does anybody want to come with me? Yeah. Even <laughs> men want to do this in groups like <laughs> girls. True. Buddy system. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. And it's always at one spot down uh, the stairs. You'd have to go down the stairs to get to the bathroom. And as soon as you pass this one spot, it didn't matter what time of day it was, it didn't matter what was going on, ice cold. And it's dark. And it's dark yeah. right in that spot. I know exactly where you mean. <clears throat> so... Uh, Many of our experiences with that uh, when we were younger would be us being stupid and going, hey, let's go ghost hunting. <laughs> so uh, and my oldest brother, by the way, just told me he did that out in Texas. And I said, nice. oh, great. What'd you find? Nothing. That's a shame. Boring. Boring. But we would go up there and we would take digital cameras with us and we would take pictures and we would see if, what, what, what we'd find. And some of the images that we caught were just terrifying. They, uh, yeah, they were... The one that still scares the crap out of me was um, I got the camera right up to the glass, I took the picture, and I walked away. And this had the the LCD screen on the back. Yeah, so it was it an was old like school one of, digital camera that school. saved onto a floppy disk. And it was one of the originals. Aww. It was one of the originals. So I got this image, and I looked at PJ, and I said, okay, I think it's time to go. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm like, why? What? Why? What's going on? What's going on? Don't worry I, about it. Let's just go. I, I yeah, walked pretty back. Much. Pretty oh, much. look, there's a food in the oven. <laughs> I walked back a little bit. And I said, um, okay, well, here's what I found. And I picked up the camera and I showed him the image on the LCD screen. And he went, yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> Uh, and all we saw was it looked like a little girl and her neck was turned. You know, her head was cocked like a dog and it looked like something was running out of her mouth. Ugh. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah. I'm okay with this. She looked at the time. Hey, time wow. What, is it three o'clock already? So many of our stories end up with us seeing something and leaving. <laughs> yeah, just leaving almost right like, away. But what did you expect to happen? We're going to go I ghost know. hunting. Oh, we saw a go. You know what? Maybe we should stop we'll this. Stop <laughs> and then we go back the next night. Exactly. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it may have been a fluke. It was a fluke. We we found all kinds of stuff. We'd go there during the day, do the same thing, take pictures, oh, and how about catch. that story at the door? The door. Yeah, that's, that's what we that's, were building up. So to, yeah, the, that that story. We'd go up during the day. We'd take pictures and everything. Same thing. Um, and we <laughs> incriminating evidence coming up. Uh, <laughs> we broke in. We got in. I mean, there was no break. breaking in. Okay, that's right. We really didn't break it, but we, the door. we got inside. Um, and there was the door right at that spot that we talked earlier about, the spot that's always cold. Yep. Um, there was a classroom on the other side of the door. Well, we got into that classroom. And one of us went into that room. Yeah, and so we it, tried to open the door and it would budge, but it felt like someone was like putting their entire body yeah, like on the door to it stop straight it. Straight up 
opened. Like, you could turn the knob and push the door open, and it would stop after about half an inch. Yeah. Like, you could see through the crack of the threshold, like, in between the door and the threshold, you could see through to the stairwell on the other side. Like, you know, it was a significant opening. Right. And then it just stopped. But it wasn't like there was a there was a latch or anything. Yeah, no there chain. No, nothing there was like nothing that. actually obscuring that door opening from either side. So we did that. We had someone else at the front. So, um, yeah, so I... Uh, so it was a, our third party. Uh, I don't know if we want to name him. Nah. But, okay, so... <laughs> call, him, call him Bob. 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 We have, it's like just like a dog, but now it's a human. It's Bob. A, it's a good name, Bob. I, I'm now picturing Bob the dog here. So <laughs> Bob the dog is the one who got the door open and we got into the place. Right. And uh, then we're like, all right, so... Like... Uh, and Bob was wearing flip flops. Yeah, we were like wearing shoes. <laughs> we were wearing shoes. He always wore flip flops. Yeah. I don't know why. And Bob says, "Guys, and it was like a ninety degree day too. It was yeah, hot. it was hot outside." Um, and Bob says, "Guys, it feels like there's a refrigerator door open." And he's like, "My toes are cold." And so we put our hands down to the bottom of the, the, bottom door, of the door, and cold air is rushing. From under this door to our hands. Could it just be the the AC in the room? That's the thing. The AC in that building is never on unless it's going to be used day of. Yeah. I'm just debunking. I know. I oh, I know exactly what you're trying I got to you. do. So yeah, it's that's not what we like, need you here for. It's not like it's not like there is anything running in the building. Exactly. I mean, the lights were off. It was pretty much sealed up for the next event and that was coming up, up for saving the energy. Whatever. Yeah, yep. exactly. So that's when we decided, you know what? Like, maybe there's something on the other side. And I went out and around to the um, the door that sees the other side. Like, So from the outside of the building, you can look down the stairwell to the other side of this door that we were Pushing on. So you can see through a window is what you're saying. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty it was much. a glass door. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah the, the, the whole front of the building was I'm just trying to give our, our listeners like a... Painting a, them a picture. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and we had, you know, there's a window open, so we're like, all right, on the count of three, you're going to push on that door. I'm going to take a picture, and we're going to see what happens. And uh, we were like, one, two, three, push, and I take a picture. And then I'm like, guys, get out there. <laughs> get out, get out there. Because on the other side of the door was just a white fog. Like a, a very thick white fog uh, just pressed right up against that door. And it didn't want you in there. Obviously. Would it, you pay attention. That stairwell is very important. <laughs> <laughs> There's something going. There is something going on that we just weren't allowed to be in. No, you're not old enough for this party, guys. Pretty much. You didn't bring the much. red solo cup, so therefore I go guess away. Not, uh, not this time. <laughs> now, uh, I still drink beer, so it doesn't matter. Um, one of one of my favorite my favorite times though at this place was us doing our little experiments. Like, well, maybe if you think you're going to get freaked out, you're going to get freaked out. You're going to see something. And if you're not paying attention, you're having fun, you're not going to... Is this gonna... the midnight story? This is the midnight story. Oh, okay, yeah. We're not going to have anything. You're just going to, you know, if you're if you're having a good time, you know, nothing's, nothing's going to bother you because you're not thinking. Yeah, and so to, before this even happened, Bob had the idea of, what if you could actually make a ghost trap like in Ghostbusters? Can you remember call? this? I do remember this. And so he's like, if negative energy brings them in, that and positive energy repels them, we make a box where it's all like batteries, so to speak, <laughs> positive side facing inwards. So when something gets in the box, it's surrounded by positive uh, electrical currents. That's really not. So you're how it works. no, that's not how it works at all. <laughs> you're trying to trap a ghost with happy thoughts. Yeah, pretty much. We really were needed... there four of you to do this. No, no only three. Then you didn't make a box. No, we needed Egon. No, but he. So he wanted to make the box, but first we had to test the theory about positive and negative energy, which obviously is the same thing as po positive and negative electrical currents. Apparently, apparently. <laughs> but well, this one... I, you know what? To play devil's advocate, they say you know if you really believe in God and if you pray a lot, 
you know, the devil can't hurt you, right? Mm -hmm. So positivity and, and love of God pushes those things away. Absolutely. And so we decided to test that theory about how it related to batteries. No, no, yeah, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to give Bob just a trying. little, I'm trying. Yeah. So anyways, He's going three of you out of four. Anyways, so Dan trouble. and I were just like, you know what, this whole positive energy thing like has a ring to it though. Let's try that out. So we, we went up there and we just, I mean, for what, a good hour, hour and a half, we just cracked jokes. We were telling stupid Wait, stories. Tell the time, time of day. Time of day. Oh, this is, this is at like midnight. Yeah. We started at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. We're out there just having and a good time. where were you sitting? Well, <laughs> you got to paint a picture. So, so we were sitting on the curb, um, just away from the, uh, away from the building and, and beside, uh, can I, I have to help out here. Beside the building, there is okay. a nice little kid yeah, so, playing area. So we're sitting on the curb, like <laughs> feet in the road. <laughs> Directly behind us to our backs is an old swing set. There there was a new playground on the other side, other of, the side building, of the building. But behind us was like an old swing set. And then to our 8 o'clock as we're sitting there is the building itself. Th that's called the, the left. Well, yeah, but behind us and to the left. It wasn't yeah. directly. It smart. It wasn't directly to the left. It was behind us and to the left. Was it quarter to 12? No. <laughs> <laughs> so if, it's top left. <laughs> if it's behind you, then isn't it 11 o'clock to you? No. 11 o'clock is forward and to the left. My brain hurts right now. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we're getting... what, if, what if it's half past two? <laughs> Can we make it a quarter past something? <laughs> we need to stop the Shaun of the Dead. Yes, we do. <laughs> so we're sitting there, and we basically we did exactly this. We we talked, we had fun, we made each other laugh, telling stupid jokes, stupid stories. And about an hour, an hour and a half passes, and we thought, all right, well, now it's time to freak ourselves out. And above the, the side entrance that we're sitting directly behind or in front of and not two o'clock or eight o'clock not in, in exactly it's right behind gotcha. us right so okay. there is six o'clock i'm gonna hit or, you or 12 o'clock so no 12 o'clock <laughs> is straight ahead so so there's there was there there's a light now this light it always flickers i i don't think and it makes even, that electrical that, hum noise. yes i don't think it's fixed i think it's still no, like it that. still does that yeah thing. but yeah. it just it flickered and it always creeped us out just gave us that weird feeling and we sat all there all lamp posts in the middle of the night freak anybody out well we uh, well yeah I'm, I'm sure you've all seen the exorcist exactly. anyway so we're sitting there and we're staring at this stupid light and it's making that low hum and it's flickering and the flickerings that's not helping i know i'm helping no that's not helping it is <laughs> anyway <laughs> that's not how the light sounds. I'm that's sick. not uh, mm. anyway it's flip <laughs> Okay, you guys can't see, but right now I'm rubbing my temples. Um, so as this is light, that your temples, here. or is that the bridge of your nose? Is that the eight o'clock? It's 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 it's, it's right here. It's is that right the here. face of the clock? It's right. I'm gonna. Oh, it's right in the middle. It's where the hands go. Oh. <laughs> yes, my <laughs> hand is in the middle of my face. Oh boy. <laughs> it's only seven o'clock, by the way. <laughs> we're acting like it's like right midnight. Now. I don't so. Know. <sighs> so lamp post creepy. lamp post still creepy and this doesn't take long this takes us maybe a total of 10 seconds and we are now we're in the zone i mean we're, we're we are just if i had anything in my digestive tract i probably would have crapped in my pants you know it's one of those like eerie and just as we're all getting sufficiently creeped out on a completely calm windless night we hear right behind us that stupid swing set. Now, this swing set is probably a good 100 yards away from us. And we just hear creak, creak. That's like, 100 feet. Yeah, it was a little farther than it that. It wasn't a football field. It was. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a football field. Like maybe, it was maybe 50 yards. Okay. It wasn't that. It wasn't. It was a Close. good distance. It was a yeah. decent distance. And we just hear it creaking as if somebody's on it. And then it stopped. And the next thing you heard was somebody plant their feet right in the grass. Like someone just jumped off. And you hear footsteps coming up just slowly. And they get closer and faster and faster. And before it got up behind us, we all got up. And, all right, we're out of here. And we took <laughs> off. 
<laughs> and we took off and Bob lost his sandal because he's an idiot and always wore sandals. And he's like, I lost a shoe. Too bad. We'll come back for it tomorrow. <laughs> later. We're man down, man down. And we all just hightail it back to my place. I've never had anything get that close to me when it comes to stuff like that. That was the most aggressive that we've ever experienced from that property. Too. Could you from try going property, into yes. its bedroom or its hallway? Its hallway. It's probably. Get. Probably. I should have done that. Um, so that's about all of the things that I can remember off the top of my head from that. It saw we were after its milkshake. It's all the boys. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> On the curb. Damn right. It's better than yours. <laughs> so now I'm sure you guys have talked to about Ray and Laura's place. They had their own oh, episode. Oh, yeah. We they had their episode own episode. Yeah. I, I've had my own fun experience. You need to tell those stories. Now, did you tell about have... about our first impression when we were moving them into that place? No. Okay. I don't remember this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because Laura and Ray's story was the prequel to the Wellhouse Exorcism. So they okay. did their story first, and that was the connection then, because they have a basement, and there's water in it, you know? Yes. And there's that yes. creepy atmosphere in the basement that, okay which is so our connection to our house we helped ray and laura move in uh we were still in college when they moved in and of course since i'm so close to the family hey come, come and help you know us move in yeah yeah not a problem it wasn't a question i'm sure dan no, get over here it was pretty much <laughs> like hey get over here all right i'm here so we're moving all this stuff in and as we're moving in we're slowly getting a tour of the house and Laura says, uh, well, hey, um, take that stuff and put it down in the basement. Don't. And Peach and I said, yeah, sure, no problem. No. And we got these two big boxes and we're <laughs> taking them down into the basement. And we get into the basement and I just stopped and I looked at PJ and I said, mm-hmm. He said, yeah, this isn't right. No. <laughs> no. So we dropped the stuff. We, well, we didn't just, blah, like, we put the stuff down. <laughs> I looked at him and said. Well, we put it at, like, the base of the steps, I think. Like, No, right? no. We were down. Like, we went down into the basement. We, we put we it went in there. The, Did yeah, you open we went, the door? Mm, I think it was already open. It was, it was already, already open. Yeah. So you missed the words on the door? Yeah, I missed the words on the door. What was on the door? You didn't? You all know what's <laughs> no, on the door? I didn't know any <laughs> so of this. Important. It says, keep door closed in big red letters. <laughs> Big red letters. Well, this is going to explain so much about what's going to happen next. <laughs> Holy freaking crap. So that door is already open. I've never, no one told me this. Because it's, it's a weird this. basement where you walk it's in the It's such steps, a weird freaking basement. And there's this like little itty bitty area that you're assuming is like for canned goods. And then there's the basement proper. There's yes. that door. The door was open. Yeah. When it's closed, keep door keep closed. Keep door closed at In all red times. paint. And it's okay. like dripping. Like you cannot make it any <laughs> Like someone creepier. painted it hurriedly because it was oh, dripping. Gosh. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it should be like in an exorcist movie. Oh, that's fun. Man. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Did they paint over it? Do they still have it? No. Wait, I don't it go down there. It still says don't uh, keep door closed. Oh, great. They I didn't wanna, paint that over. I want a picture of that. Yeah, you're I, going, I don't uh, go, oh, I don't think so. I don't go down there. So you're not going to get it from me. I don't blame you. So that was the first time that I'd been in the house. I'm already getting, mm -mm, this is bad. I don't because like this. Because they opened the door. So No, it was already open. It was already open. I said they, they opened the door. That's why. So we are oh putting the rest day. of the stuff in the house, and Ray is showing us around. Oh, yeah, this is the living room. This is the dining room. There's a little bathroom in the dining room. That's important for later. Hey, there's this place. There's this place. Here's the upstairs. And then he took us to the attic. Hey, here's the attic. And we get up to the attic, and even Ray's looking around, and he goes, I don't like this room. And Peach and I said, yeah, no. No. I don't like this room either, so let's drop off what we're dropping off and we'll go. So that was my first encounter with the house. I'm already sufficiently creeped out. Hey, good luck with this. <laughs> okay. Hi. Um, now, shortly after that, uh, maybe, what was it, a year that you moved in with them? I moved in first, didn't I? Or did no, you? I was there first. He was there first. I was there first, but I think, <laughs> I, think I was there for about a year, a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. like, so... so PJ moves in with them. I mean, it's a nice big house, plenty of space. And, uh, what's well, a Victorian? It's one of the biggest houses in the town, yeah, actually. It's a big and, house. and I get into, hey, come on over to the house. All right, yeah, we're going to hang out and watch movies and crap. All right, cool. And of course, Shanna's there. Hey, we're going to have fun. Of course I was. And, um, you don't I say, leave a baby in a corner. I say, hey, I gotta go to <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom. And they said, Well, you can't use the bathroom up here. They're being they're they're remodeling it so it's out of order. So you gotta go downstairs and use the bathroom that's off of the dining room. So I told you it was come back. So I go, Oh yeah, okay, okay, whatever. So I go down the steps and I turn on the light, go over and I get inside the bathroom. And this bathroom is tiny. 
It's, it's you can tell they built it. Well, it's like most houses from the turn of the century. They built these bathrooms into underneath the, the stairs. Under the stairs. That's right. So like if I'm not a tall, tall guy, I'm five eight, so I'm like, eh, I'm the short side of tall. But even I go, uh, I'm gonna bash my head off that while I'm trying to pee. That's I not cool. Fit in here or just... you can lean on it. Like uh, you, you can just lean forward I, on there. <laughs> I I I'm not gonna lie, I do occasionally do that. Um <laughs> So I'm in I fit there, in there just fine, just saying. I'm in there and I'm and I'm I'm <laughs> relieving myself and I hear Ew. Shanna say, Dan, 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 and I'm getting I'm getting pissed off. What? <laughs> what? What do you want? And I don't hear anything. I'm like, Ooh! so you know, I finish up. I go. That's upstairs. the sound he makes when he relieves it, himself. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I go. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I I come up the stairs and of course I'm. I'm angry. I'm a very easily angered individual. I'm going, what? What do you want? What? I remember Janice, you yelling at me. I'm just like, what the heck? is going, what? I said, what do you want? Why are you even calling me? I'm trying to be. <laughs> what do you want? And she said, I didn't call for you. I said, bullshit. Who's been yelling for me? And PJ Thompson goes, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, what? You heard the mimic. What? What's the mimic? What are you talking about? What? Yeah, so... There's this thing, and of course, he tells me all the stories that I'm sure you guys have already heard about. Yep. And I'm going. You're one of the stories, actually. Going. Ah, uh, crap! Oh, when when they heard me in the house. When well, we, we heard, heard you in the house. Oh yeah. yeah, that was a fun one. You weren't there. You weren't even no. like in the state. Yeah, I think. You don't know. You don't know. You, you weren't told you me. You literally weren't there. I know. He wasn't literally. The state, I literally he wasn't, wasn't the state. There. Okay. I was, I was probably doing a show. That's not say. Like I remember you yelling at me, and I'm like, I'm just sitting there on, on the futon going. What did I do? <laughs> I was like, I was attacked. I was like, oh, <laughs> so I'm sure Ray told his story about the figure, right? Oh yeah, we told the all the good stories. All right. So um, shortly around the time that Ray had this story, my first wife and I had moved into our first apartment in the next town over. Um, this is something I did not tell her for probably a good year because I don't want to freak her out. Now, we lived in that house that was three houses up from the police station right down the street. I just want to say, side note, PJ didn't tell me that there was a black figure thing in the, the guest bedroom for like 24 hours and I was angry. Holding off a year, I don't know. Well, because it's basically the same thing. So she got easily freaked out. Now... I'd rather know than not know, though. Just just putting out there to our listeners. So tell them. <clears throat> the thing is, Ray didn't tell me about this until after it had already happened to me. So I'm thinking something either followed me, or you shared her. We probably, and not in the fun way that you guys are thinking. Get your mind out of the gutter. Are you saying that this one got around? Oh, it did. Which is a thought. What, what's really funny about that is uh, the apartment that I stayed in was actually uh, rented out by a lady of the night back in the mm. uh, the good old days <laughs> of the town. Well, remember I had that red light? Oh, why? yeah, I know. Well, yeah, that was her red light room. That's why I put it up there. Let people know I'm in business. So, that's how you paid for college. Well, yeah. I'm still There's, paying for college. Don't be embarrassed. It's okay. Well, you know. You got to make that money. That's right. That's right. So... This is, like I said, this is around the same time that this same thing happened to Ray in his house. I woke up at about three in the morning and the way that my bedroom was laid out was there are two doors to get into this one room. I remember that. It was weird. But the one door is completely blocked because that's where my bed is. My bed is right up against this door. You can't open it. And if you do, you go, ha, oh, headboard. <laughs> yeah. No way to get in. It's a heavy bed. You can't move it. Now, the door... Immediately to your left goes out into the what, living room. What hour on the clock? Yeah, would you say it was like <laughs> three? Ten o'clock? Two? Nine o'clock? Directly to the left? It would be nine o'clock? Yeah, is that your nine? I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> it could be nine or three, depending. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on which point? way you're saying is north, okay? <laughs> so it's off to my left. So if you were to come in from my living room... It is the first room that you go into after the living room. So you're nine o'clock. Got it. Okay. Did so you say that's the west? Or <laughs> is that more north? <laughs> north, northeast. <laughs> it's north, northwest. Okay. Mm. Angie has spoken. <clears throat> All right. So anyway. anyway. 
how far <laughs> away from your bed as the crow flies, would you say? Um, oh my gosh. Like, all it has to do is oh just lift gosh. its rear end and poop, and it's there, okay? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very that's, oddly specific visual. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. You're it welcome. really works. I mean, crows do have a weird way of pooping. Oh. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, side note. We were in New York City. My mom gets out of her car, um, and we're going to go see a show for the Girl Scouts. And she goes, I just hate being in the city because you know what I hate the most? And I go, what? And she says, I hate all the freaking pigeons. And we know it right then. One poops on her shoulder. <laughs> like, That's called karma. <laughs> I know. And I was like, Mom, you're not going to believe this. What? I'm pretty sure a pigeon just pooped on you. No, it didn't. <laughs> Look at your right shoulder. Oh, come on. And of course, me and all of my Girl Scouts, we all start laughing. Of course, of course. I remember a bird pooped on my brother Joe when we were um, coming home from school one day. That was funny. <laughs> Boom, right in his hair. Oh, at least it's on his shoulder. She like wipe it off the coat, you know, as one of those windbreakers. So, <laughs> so um, back to the story at hand. And the uh, scary stuff, not the happy stuff. About three o'clock. Hour wait, hand or minute hand. I'm going to punch you. I know you're holding on to that one. (laughs) So it's three o'clock in the morning. (laughs) Now, three in the morning, I wake up suddenly, and of course, my eyes are a little blurry. And no, it is not Jason (laughs) Voorhees, and he is not saying, Kill her mommy. Whoa, whoa. That's actually what that. Yeah, okay. Anyway, little, little trivia there for you so i wake up my eyes are a little blurry and i look over in the doorway and there is a woman a black figured woman i mean all i can see is strands of hair outlines i can't see anything else there's no face there's no so it's a shadow you mean. so it's a shadow it is a three-dimensional shadow standing in my freaking doorway is she naked i don't know because i can't Shot. see anything else I'm going to hit you in the nose. I was trying to be serious there. So. Well, because it'd be interesting if she were like completely naked, like a shadow. Because you can tell like, if something's wearing clothes and with a shadow form, unless it's just too kind of right. too flowy. So I see this woman walk by. She comes right over to my side of the oh, bed, uh-uh. no. the edge of my bed. She stares down at me real quick. And then the next <sighs> thing I know, she looks up. She turns her head towards the back of my room towards the foot of my bed and she starts walking that way and i'm thinking oh great she's gonna leave no she pivots and she walks the length of my bedroom or the width of my of my bed stops pivots and then she's walking right back up right next to my at the time wife and i go oh dear god and i flipped on the lights and there's nothing the door of the uh, closet is briefly opened like it always is. And I go, oh, dear God, oh, dear God, oh, dear God. And I grabbed my at the time wife and I pulled her close and I flipped off the light. And I went, oh, God, I want it to be morning. <laughs> and I tried to sleep. I didn't tell her for almost a year. And when I finally told her this, she looked at me and she said, why didn't you tell me this? I said, because I didn't want you to freak out. Now we're already on the way of moving out of this place See, because I we're heading to California. I to have known. Now hold on, it gets better because I tell her this story and then she looks at me and she says, "I'm glad we're moving because as much as I love this apartment, I hate being here by myself. This place freaks me the hell out when I'm by myself." And I said, "It's just thank God because I hated being there all by myself. If someone else is with me, I was fine." The second I was alone in that house, it didn't matter how many video games I had to play, how many movies I had to watch, how many books I had to read. If I sat there by myself, even in broad daylight, I'm going, this place feels creepy. It's weird. And that was even before that happened. Well, that's something that PJ and I talked about during our podcast. And I like how PJ kind of put it. It's the idea that... (sighs) Even when you're alone, you don't feel alone. Exactly. And you said you it's, you want a movie that's like that. So. Yeah, I I because ever since The Exorcism, I've been addicted to just watching horror movies. Like I watch an ungodly amount of horror <laughs> movies. And Nothing uh, wrong with that? Uh, like, like I should really get a subscription to Shutter at this point. Do it. Just, you but might as well. Anyways, um, we're not affiliated. I'm looking for <laughs> Shutter gave us money. I'm yeah. looking for a movie Free that captures out. that feeling of being a al- being physically alone, but not, but not actually being alone. alone. Well, I don't know if you're going to find that, in which case, I know, get me a typewriter. I'll make it so. The only the only one that's come close, and I said this in one of our earlier episodes, is 
the first half hour of Paranormal Activity. Okay, it's the I can only see that. movie that comes close until it gets all dumb and Hollywood at the end. Yes, like you know, there's uh, my favorite scene that I like to recall, like talk about is they're just lying in bed, and you know, like the camera fast forwards through the night until like something happens. So like fast forwards, fast forward, and stops. And then you're just listening to silence for a second, and then all of a sudden, clink, like, keys fall from somewhere in the house. And it, I remember um, Laura and Ray, when they saw it, they're like, that's it. And I'm like, that's freaking perfect! Like, that's exactly what it is! It is. That's uh, what it's it, like. Because it's annoying, actually. Think, like, when you're there and it happens enough, it becomes that white noise and you're annoyed. But to anybody else looking in, that's freaking messed up. Yeah. It's kind it's of the like only the stuff movie that, that kept us up all you and night I, long. Oh yeah, it's the stuff that you and I encountered uh, here at, at your place when we were kids. But more of the, well, I'm not terrified. I'm now I'm just mad, kind of stories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you tell any of those? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, the one that we told was the doors. <laughs> the basement doors. The doors. That's my favorite one. And Megatron. <laughs> and the Furby. Yeah. I also like telling the Furby story. Furby stories. Uh, everybody I've told the Furby story to, they always look at me before I even get anything out, and they're like, "I hate Furbies." Yeah, so these are creepy <laughs> anyway. Thank you. I know. Why did we like those things? I never did. I always thought you were weird for having a Furby. Furby will never give us money for saying their toy on here so often. No, yeah, that's all right. So we just say they're creepy <laughs> because no one buys Furby. <laughs> oh, uh, that one's still dead, right? It's, it's gone. It's in the trash. It's oh, gone. good. We got rid of it. We only got rid of it a couple months ago, but... Oh, oh, great, great, <laughs> Well, because I didn't realize we still had it. I thought we had already gotten rid of it. I was like, and it's Owen, still in the house? And Owen was terrified of it, so I put it right over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean. Now, I, did you tell about? Did you tell them about the uh, the horse? Yeah. Your sister's horse. Mm-hmm. That she one, still has the horse. Does she still have it? In her attic. Oh, my God. Why would you keep it? Oh, God. <laughs> God. So that one creeped me out. That was really the first time, besides the door incident... And any of the like stupid things that we encountered, that was really the first time where I went, Whoa, no. That's one of the truly no. most unexplainable things I've ever so seen. So that one was weird because I picked up the stupid horse and it, like, oh, that's so cool. It still has batteries and it popped open and there's no batteries in the damn toy. And I went, yeah, nope. And Just I'm like, tossed it. And I'm like, oh, it's been doing that for like three years, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. When we cleaned out that attic, though, we had so many good times. I don't remember any creepy things going on after we cleaned out the attic. Yeah, at least oh, in I the do. attic. Well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I we, have lots we, of stories. We do lot, yeah, but well, I mean, when we were immediately kids, after, immediately after, yeah, like in high it didn't school. seem like because we would go up there to play video games and hang out all the time, watch mm-hmm. movies. And there was really nothing up there that uh, maybe it was. Because I didn't sleep up there though. Like, I know. I, I, I know still wouldn't do that. I know you didn't because you slept. In the room that led to the stupid thing. Yep. I kept the door locked. I know. I remember. And I always <laughs> wondered until that day. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you said anything about our friend Fred? Well, that's what we... Yes, you here. we talked about Fred, and I said in the last episode of Lauren Ray that we had a Fred sighting. And we that we you did. would tell it. So, and, I uh, had... Yeah, go. <laughs> it was, it I've was, never had a Fred sighting. So... It was, about, what, three weeks ago now? Three, four weeks ago? It was right after the Sniper Elite. Right recording. after the Sniper... All right, so for those of you who listen to all of our podcasts, it was right after our Sniper Elite episode that we recorded that. Uh, we said our goodbyes. Now, I did not park where I normally park. I had to park just up the street. And as I'm parking up the street, I'm going, man, this is great. And I started to hear somebody walking around with change in their pocket. And I went, hello? <sighs> Could it be... It's been almost 20 years, and I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> and sure enough, I got to my car, and there it was. Jingling of, of keys or change or whatever. And then the shadow, boom, right down the alley where PJ and I first saw him uh, over 20 years ago. And I went, <gasps> and I immediately picked up my phone and said, PJ, I just saw Fred! <laughs> <laughs> Did you make out, like, a shape at all? Uh, I got... Because I never... You've never made out I've a shape? I've never made okay. out a shape. So it's it's... It looks like a man, but of course it looks like an elongated shadow. So it looks like you're constantly seeing somebody's shadow walk by. So it mm-hmm. looks like it's very stretched, stretched out, yeah. like the light is coming just to the side of him. Um, and you always know he's there because you hear that, the that jingling, jingling, yeah, like keys or, or uh, change in the pocket. This isn't answering my question about the shape. 
I've never seen him, so I have. So we all know what he sounds like. So that no, I just told you it looks very. It looks like a man. Okay. Like a man okay, running. Like a man with a hat. Or no, was he no, it looks thing? like it. It looks like a. It looks. It just looks like a man. He look with, like a man. Yeah, he look. He look like a man. Uh, not the not the tall man. No, he, he looks like a man who with um, just like a normal slacks and a shirt. Hmm. Uh, no, so overly, like nothing, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. No overly baggy clothing. No jacket. No hat. I okay. always imagined him wearing like sweats. Now I'm just sad. I, I imagined him in like pilgrim clothing, <laughs> <laughs> like a big hat. You know, <laughs> big the... pilgrim hat. So you th- what you think? You you're thinking when you're hearing buckles? No buttons in his pockets. I, I don't know. No, I imagine change, but. <laughs> Pilgrim clothes. Pilgrim clothes. <laughs> Pilgrim clothes. Okay. Because of how they old the town is. I don't then. know. <laughs> they had coins. Oh, gosh. Oh, off to the old gristmill. Hmm. Going the wrong way for the gristmill, buddy. Yeah. I just imagined he was, like, running and working out. And, like, so I just imagined him, like, in track pants or, like, a windbreaker. With chains. <laughs> With chains. With chains, yeah. So he get a sewn afterward. <laughs> I'm not from this town. <laughs> oh, God. I just want to keep pointing that out. I'm not from here. <laughs> Oh, man. Never got to meet Fred. And I used to go running every morning at 5 a.m. Never got to see a Fred. Well, you need to be on the evening. That's why. That's right. He's not a morning guy. Yeah, he's he's, an, he's, like, he's like Kolchak, the night stalker. I'm not a morning person either, anymore either because I have three children. Yeah. I enjoy sleeping in now. Don't we all? I don't have kids and I love sleeping in. What is a sleeping in? A sleeping in for me anymore is any time after 8 o'clock. So like 8, what is eight, eight to 8.30 is like sleeping in. 7 is sleeping in. <laughs> 6.30 is sleeping 6:30. in. <laughs> after 5. Yeah, is... it's wonderful. Again, I don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a Fred sighting. What else can we talk about? You know, so this one isn't really a scary story, but this is still one of my favorite stories about watching TV here or watching movies with you at this house. Uh, we were we were watching the ring okay so it's the it, it was <laughs> oh you mean the true tale of my house got it so we're watching the ring and i if you remember the opening of the the movie the entire movie is you see the beginning of the tape yeah, that's, no, that's what not you the see. opening well it's not it's the, early it's, it's, it's very, very early so yeah. like within the first 10 minutes maybe 15 you see that tape you see the opening of this tape and we're watching it, and PJ's saying, you got to watch this. This, this, this movie's so scary. Oh, it's great. I never saw it was so, scary. It was so great. It was good. And I'm watching it. Because it's and, not and scary. We, it's, it's really not. <laughs> and we get to that portion where you see the tape, and they go, oh, well, they threw it down well. Pause. What? This, they they threw it down a well. Spoilers for a 20-year-old movie. For a 20-year-old movie. movie. He says, <laughs> how, how did you know that? Well, R- rewind. By the way, guys, we're watching this on a VHS. So, yeah, so the re- rewind button. Re- rewind, <laughs> rewind. And he rewinds it, and he presses play, and we go see all the stupid stuff again. And I said, pause. And he paused, and it's there on the ring. And I said, there, you can see the bricks. It's a well. He goes, all right, we're done. Got to turn it off. I said, why? He said, you ruined it. Movie's over. Like, but no, I want to I wanna see the rest of this. You... Just press go play. Home. <laughs> go home. <laughs> I like to say that that's my house. That's your house? Because of the well. Did 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 you throw a little Japanese girl in the well? I don't know. Someone, Why would you someone th- might have we did. Someone did something. Why would you house? throw a little Japanese girl <clears throat> down the well? I'm sure there are other deserving participants. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Filipino. No, he's half Japanese. I know he is. Do he, you? It's the closest we got. Yes, I do know. He's half Japanese. Ray? Yeah. Ray, come Ray? here. Oh, he's in Florida right now. Never mind. Get your butt from Florida and get back here. We're going to put you down a well. <laughs> it's for science. <laughs> we've gone off track. <laughs> What'd you say? He said we've gotten off track. A little bit. Oh, <laughs> listeners like to laugh. Shana won't let me do an episode on cryptids. Why? I think you and I should do an episode on cryptids. We should. So we can, because we can, like we can talk well about the Chicago House Bulls. Exorcism was my idea. This is my podcast. You can have your your games overboard. You can have D and D. This is mine. One day, if you bring enough paperwork and enough research, and I like it, the answer is yes. We could talk about Spring Heeled Jack. Oh, no, the Kandahar Giant. So I want to talk about. Yeah, have you heard about that one? too? Yes, I have. She is not happy. <laughs> 
this is all probably going to get cut. Uh, probably. You can keep us part in here. And if any of the listeners want to hear about cryptids, they can email Games Board to tell us that they want to hear about it. But for now, I wanted to do haunted objects and locations. You know what? You know, maybe we should just do our own podcast about cryptids. Yeah, mm. but don't put it under Wellhouse Exorcism. This is mine. You know, you know what? You know what? I even have one that I brought up in college that nobody knew about, the Marching Hat Kid. Oh, Marching Hat Kid. <laughs> And you put on your own podcast. <laughs> All right, Thank everyone. You, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Wellhouse Exorcism. And uh, if you would like to uh, talk to us in any way, come uh, email us at gamesoboard at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your stories. and We might feature them on here because I'd love to hear about more haunted areas and locations and objects, especially ones that are off the beaten path. Like we just did the... Um, Crone of the, the cat skills. Crone of the cat skills. I like that kind of stuff. We're going to do the Dybbuk box next. I like those kinds of stories. Maybe cryptids in the future. But if you have any haunted locations or haunted house stories, I just want to hear about it. Or haunted wells that don't or maybe do include Japanese girls that are dead or not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the case may be, drop us a line. Angie, cover your ears. <laughs> just say there's a real ring out there. I'm living in one. Anywho, please email Ooh. us, and I would love to sift through all of that because this is my podcast, and I would love to feature those kinds of stories on here. Well, you know, if you, if you guys do send in um, uh, stories, you can have them read by a professional actor. Oh, we, need to, we need to get one of those, yeah. Where, where does one find a professional mm. actor? Hmm. Mm. Hmm. I hate you guys. Angie. <laughs> I hate you guys. You brought it's Angie. It's me. It's me, guys. It's me. Angie. Yeah, she's right there. I- also, listen to our other podcast. <laughs> Games Overboard, where we review ga- board games and talk about the awesome stories they tell. And Danger and Dice, where we play D&D and get into all kinds of crazy mischief. 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 And uh, th- thank you very much, and we'll talk to you next week. Have a great night. Thanks, Dan, for coming on to my podcast. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Okay, I need to find um, an actual actor. Don't mind, I can go. Here we go. <clears throat> I'll put out some more notes. Yeah, I got one of that. <laughs> <laughs>